So welcome to our first uh, free adult master class here at the Irvine School of Music. Uh, and uh, do you think maybe you can introduce yourself a little bit? You can tell us a little bit about um, uh, your name, your background, how long have you been studying piano, and what your musical goals are. Yeah, I've been, uh, my name is Venu Olala. Uh, I've been uh, studying music for the last four and a half years. So I started with the Irvine School of Music. So, uh, and it's been four and a half years since then. Uh, <clears throat> Excellent. Basically, my musical goal is like to just enjoy music and learn some Indian movie songs. Yeah. That's my goal. But uh, along the along along the journey, like I, I started learning class a lot of classical music, Western classical music. Excellent. Yeah. And you are part of the Royal Cons uh, Conservatory examinations, right? That we do every yes. every year. Yeah. yeah. I'm also writing RCM exams uh, yeah. for the last four years, and uh, I have I'm preparing for my RCM level seven now. So I started when I started, I started at RCM level two, and I'm, I slowly progress around to RCM level seven. Excellent! So now you're getting in the last uh, last stretch of it. Yeah. Yeah. Good. I think so. Excellent. <laughs> Good. So then uh, today we're going to um, listen to you play too. Um, and uh, then we're going to learn some new music and maybe we can talk about some some good practices on the piano like there is a specific issue that I want to talk about today which is the hand interdependence. Uh, but before we do that, why don't we listen to some of your uh, pieces that you've been working on? You know, so do you have something that you'd like to play for us? Yeah. Uh I try the Chopin one. Just Excellent. Good. First, a couple of measures. And that's the and prelude. Yeah. So let me pull it out. I have it here. That's prelude in B minor. Good job. So those are just the the first two phrases of it, right? Yeah, just first two phrases. Yeah. Excellent. And I really like how you uh, how you definitely worked on the dynamics. Now, do I can tell that you've been uh, following the crescendo and the decrescendo there? Good. So let's let's check a little bit of what's happening uh, on a deeper level in those first uh, uh, first four measures of the piece. So we have this first phrase that goes. sort of the same thing but do you think it should be at the same level or, or or how do you think should the next group be it should be more uh, at the next level basically it should be yeah it's kind of like uh, uh, so we went up it was just like, imagine that it was the it first bit of it. yes it, it was it was our first attempt, attempt at something we, we wanted to say something and we kind of said it halfway I went like Venu this is what I want to say and then I kind of changed my mind for a second. And then I was more determined. Vanu, this is what I want to say, right? So you have to show that a little bit in the music when you play it. So we have the first time. Let's just try that first part one more time. 
Then the other thing I want you to focus on when you play this again, make sure you count correctly. Uh, think of your eighth notes as your beat. You can do it a little bit slower too, because it says lento. So, uh, so always count one and two and three and, because you, you added some eighth notes before in the first time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so let's try one more time, a little bit slower. Let's redo that one, that's okay. Good, that was better, yeah. Uh, let me ask you something. Uh, but does, uh, does your piano connect to your computer? Uh, can you hear the sound of the piano on your computer? I can, yeah. Can you? Not now, not now. But do you think you can set that up? Is that something that you could set up easily? But this is a different computer though. Oh no, then never mind. Because I wanted to see if you can just have the audio from your computer coming through Zoom so we can hear a little bit more clear. No, and that's, actually, a, that's a good uh, alternative, but it's okay if it's not something that you have set up. I'm using a different computer for the... For yeah. the Marvel, right? Okay, that's okay. Yeah, for, that's okay. No, no, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, we can still hear. Yeah, we just recommend for the online lessons. There are two ways of doing it for... Uh, if we have an, a piano, then of course having a very good uh, a webcam microphone, external microphone is great. Uh, for... Oh, okay. If you have a keyboard, we found that a very good alternative is to have the sound directly from your keyboard going through the computer and through Zoom. Like that there's, um, uh, th basically there's no distortion or, uh, yeah, no okay, mic. Okay, we can set up probably for next class. Yeah, probably. yeah, for sure, yeah. That's something that we can, we can definitely help with, yeah. Okay. Uh, good, so, um, uh, that was much better now. I could definitely hear the phrasing there. Um, so now let's take a look at the next measure where we, uh, we're looking at measure Five. Can we just see the left hand there? Yeah. Good, and let's stop here. Good. Let's play the first measure, just the the only the first two beats of the first measure. The first the very first measure of the piece. Good. Good. Now let's play the first two beats of the third measure. Yeah. Good. And now let's hear the the um, fifth measure, first two beats. Good. So compare these. What's happening between the one, three, and five measures? Well, basically, I think it's going more at the. It's more going more to the next higher notes, basically. It is, it, it's the, but, but it's not, if you look at it closely, it's the top note is not going up by a whole lot. It's D in the first one, right? If you follow along in the first measure, yeah. the top note is the D there. In the right. next one, the top note is the F sharp, and the yeah. next one is the G. Yeah, yeah. so it, it does go up. But there's also something uh, something else that, that changes there, um, aside from just the top note. Oh, okay. Something, what, what else changes that, uh, oh. that you're noticing? It has to do more with the, the whole thing, not just one note. Okay, I think the basically keys are changing. Like, uh, yeah. this is B minor. When yeah, and, and it's, uh, do you notice that the first one is B minor in closed position? B, D, F sharp, that's the closest position you can have. Yeah. B, D, F sharp. Now the next one. Yeah, so do you see it's expanding? Yeah. So exactly. that's what I was getting at. It's an expansion, right? That they're becoming larger. Everything is... Right. Okay. You're covering a lot more more ground with your chords there. So the first one is just close by, right here. Yeah. yeah? The second one. And then the last one. Look how giant this is. You, you can actually... The best way to see it is look at the low note and the high note. In the first one, the low note is a B. The high note is a D. Yeah. That's an interval of a tenth. In the next one, we have B to F sharp. 
that's the interval of a let's see do you know what that is so b to d is a tenth then is four fourteen uh, it's actually no because it just adds two more so so from the tenth eleven would be the e Oh, okay. The twelfth. B to F sharp is a twelfth. Yeah. Okay. Or it's a fifth above an octave. We can also say that. Okay. Now look at this one, because that's why this one is very important the last one. It's G to G. So what is that? G major. Uh, uh, yes, but what is the, the distance between the lowest two octaves, exactly. Or another way to say two octaves is a fifteenth. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so it's a it's a big gap, and also this one is important because it's two octaves, so it's the same note. So you're covering everything for two octaves between those notes. So so that's something that you can also show when you're performing. You can show the expansion that's happening here. Okay. Okay. It's becoming broader. It's becoming larger and larger. It's not just the dynamics that are louder. So think in two ways. The dynamics you can think maybe vertically, right? This is piano. This is forte. But also you can think as far as the the uh, the way you play, the way you kind of put the pressure into the way you interpret it, the crescendo, the the range of the crescendo is kind of broader like this horizontally. Right, right. Okay, so let's just try the beginning one more time and then we'll move on. Just so you can get all the notes in there. Good job, much much nicer now. Good. So yeah, you made a lot of progress on this. Yeah, on this uh, on this project. So you can continue with it now. Uh, now you have the difficult part. So for that one, just to uh, practice very very slowly. Do you want to try to read through it once? Yeah, I've been trying to learn it. Yeah, let's, let's try. Let's try it slowly. You can leave the grace note out. Okay. Yeah, and then the next part is going to more more familiar, more like the beginning. Yeah, this is the more difficult part. Yes, and the, the, this part is going to be both once you, um, as we've seen before, once you... Uh, left hand and right hand separately, so... Yeah, I would say for this one, you shouldn't try it together until you have the left hand separately really well, because uh, this is a, j a very long line. The line here starts actually from the G, if you notice carefully, if, when you, if from measure 5. Uh, this is the whole melody, look. Pretty long. 
long line. And while this is happening, the right hand comes in with its own line. See where you see the slur? So that's the right hand uh, slur. So we have to, all of those things, uh, we need to learn them by themselves first. Okay? So can we try uh, just the left hand first? Let's, let's do that whole line starting in measure five. So you can really feel it as one thing. Now one finger. And so that, that's, a, that's a grace note to the slash going through it. So that means that uh, uh, that's gonna be very fast. Like this. Like almost together. No, more, more together. Why don't you, uh, this is how I, I teach this part. Play them together. One. Those notes are E and D, right? Yes, the E and the D together. Play them as one thing. So now do the same thing. So it should feel the same way to you, though if you separate them. But just a little bit so the one is before the two finger. The one finger is before the two. So. There we go. That's it. Good. So that's the whole phrase. Okay. So see, it's a very beautiful phrase because it goes, it goes down, and then it kind of goes around a little bit, and then all the way down, right? It goes up. And now down. That's still part of it. The ending. Yeah, so we should we should play all of them together. Good. There we go. Very nice. Yeah. So so practice that by itself. Really good until you can do it perfectly. Okay. And now let's take mm -hmm. the right hand just from the where you see the slur. You see where that is? It's in measure six. Mm -hmm. The last part of measure six. So this part. So it's m much slower than that. Let's hear them with them because I think we have some wrong notes in there. Let's let's hear that same uh, from the same place. Now change to the G and the B, still the G stays the same, and then back. Good. And the grace note there is the same, so I recommend that for now, do it without the grace note. Just do it like... Ignore the grace note. Last part. Uh, this is one of the hardest parts because you have to connect them really well. So for this, so we we don't want to, especially the top notes. So so we're gonna try some different fingers there. Let's try for the first one, one, two, and four. Or I'm sorry, let's try one, two, and three. You have one, two, and three. Then one, two, and four on the next one. And now one, four, and five on the next one. And now don't uh, don't move down with the pinky. Just now we have to move down with the. I'm sorry. Let's change on this one to one, three, and five. And then you have one, four, and one, two, and four on the next one. 
Yeah, we'll make sure they're, they're together. One, four, and four. One, so one, three, and five on the first one. Yeah. Try that. And then one, two, and four. There you go, yeah. Like that everything is gonna be connected there, okay? Yeah, much nicer sound, good. Yeah, let's hear it one more time. Uh, do all of them, let's do, let's do the whole measure. So one, two, and three should be the first one. No, no, just, the, just that measure. So the C sharp, F double sharp, A sharp with a one, two, and three. I'm hearing a different note in there. Can you play one more time? That's it. Then one, two, and uh, four. That's it. Now one, three, and five. And one, two, and four. Yes. That's it. Very nice. So then we're going to have a nice one there. Yeah, very connected, very connected, close to the keys and make sure that you connect the top notes very well. And now, three and five. Good, better. So yeah, practice on this so you can get that really, really good, okay, for next time. Okay. Good, so now let's, uh, let's actually move on to the piece that we just sent you, okay? We're gonna be doing okay. some sight reading. Okay, and we're going to talk about some of the uh, interesting aspects of this piece. So let me just get it here too. So, uh, what key do you think we are in here? Uh, well, it's a C major, I believe. Yes, C major. Good. And we're in three, four. Okay. So let's just look at the. Let's just look at it first before we start playing. So if you look at the first four measures, do you notice a pattern? Uh, first uh, four measures. Okay. Yes. So the first uh, two measures are C major card, basically. Good. Yeah. So you notice that. So they're they're in the. Let's uh, see how the first one is left hand, yeah. like right hand. Yeah. Uh, left hand, right hand. Third measure is G major. Uh, uh, the double check that one more time. The third measure is the C measure again. Yes, it is exactly. And then it's basically two notes repeated, like a Good. A, B, C. Good. And the uh, note is the rhythm. We have quarter notes, right? We have quarter notes all the way until measure four. We have eight notes, right? Yeah, all eight notes. So how yeah, will we count good. those eight notes? Okay, can you just count through the first four measures? Like it's like one, two, three, one, two, three. I would say one, two, three, four. I would say one and two and three. Let, let's so count, when you have quarter notes, count just the number. And then when you have eight notes, count the ends as well. How would you say? Okay. Yeah, one and two and three. Yeah, but from the beginning it would be like one, two, three, one, two, three, one, oh, yeah. two, three, one, and two, and three, and one, two, right? Yeah. yeah, so so let's try to do that, and let's do it a little bit slower than I just did right now. Let's try to read through just the first four measures. So when you, when, you, when you got to that part, when you got to the eight notes, did you notice that you play them slower? Because you play the beginning. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one and two, and three, and that's how it should have been. So let's take the eight right. notes as our main guide. So, so then if we're going to do the eight notes, one, and two, and three, and then the quarter notes should be one, two, three. Also, very one more thing. Uh, let's play the notes that are on the bottom staff in the left hand and the notes that are on the top staff in the right hand. Oh, okay. So let's try that. So then left, 
And right. Then left. And then good. And then right. Oops. Good. Good. So this is and this is the uh, one of the main. And let's actually do that one more time now. And look at the beginning of measure five in the left hand. Where do you have to get to? Um, the deficit EA. Yeah. And then... Yeah. So you can just stop on that note. Let's do it one more time and then let's just there but with that note, okay? So one more time. Very nice, good. So this is where we will talk about the concept of hand interdependence, okay? okay. Interdependence. Because notice that in this piece in particular, but in a lot of your pieces as well, uh, when one hand is playing, see like right hand is playing, left hand is getting ready. And how can we do that? How can we time it so that it reaches this note? And this note when we need it, and then back here. So we need to time everything in such a way that, uh, that it reaches the note there. So one thing we don't want to do, and this is something that working with you before, I've noticed. Sometimes you wait till the last minute. So you do this. One, two, three. One, two, three. Oh, one, two, three, right? Did you see how just one okay. there? Yeah. Yeah, so let's try that at a slow tempo. So this is measure one. Measure two, and already at the beginning of measure two, the right hand is moving slowly. Then the left hand is moving slowly. And now you look here. When we have the eighth notes, already my left hand is going, getting ready for this. So let's try that slowly like that. Don't get ready. Good. No. Good. So that was very good. Excellent. Excellent the timing and, and everything on it now. Now do it in a little bit more of a um, uh, what was it? more gracefully, more more graceful way than just kind of like um, jumping. So, so think of it as part of the music. Does that make sense? See, the music should be very legato here. It's a very legato piece. Okay. Okay. Uh, and think of it as part of the music, like this. Look, look, look at my, look at my left hand as I go. See, like it's part of, it's almost like floating there. And then, uh, they're floating. So like that, it feels like you know, it's not just you're moving your hands around. You're also this contributes to the visual of the music of your the performance. Okay. So let, let's try that one more time. But it was very good. And now you can use the pedal too, by the way. You, you see that there's a pedal sign there? You can have the pedal down through the whole first, uh, first four measures. Don't rush the chord notes. Good, and let's keep going. Let's keep going now, because now I think you are going to notice that there's a little bit of a pattern. If you look at what comes next. A little slower. Yeah. A little, a little slower. So one and two and three. And then the same thing here. You should try to prepare the next one, but that's okay because I know you're just reading. Measure here. Good. 
think I have to go back. The measure before. So the measure before. Uh, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's uh, how about we start on the third uh, notice that it's a sequence right so it's the same pattern repeated first we have it on C right and then we have it on A why don't you start one more time from the beginning and uh, and keep track of the pattern so first we start on C so let's do the whole thing on C Yay. Yay. Good. And now this is the same thing but on A. And now we're gonna move everything to the F. Good. So what is the let me ask you something, what is the distance between C, A, F? Do you notice what what pattern is that? Uh, C, A. Uh, it's like three notes down, basically. Yeah, you're basically it's, skipping. It's you're basically down. skipping every other note, right? So you start on yeah. C, you skip the B, you have A, you skip the G, you have F. Then what? what is next in that pattern? And then it has to be D. D. And then D, if you look closely, D is where the, the repetition stops. D is where it starts changing a little bit, okay? So that's when you have to be ready for the, the change. What would come next in the pattern after D? Down, down an octave. That's the correct chord. You're thinking of like the correct chord, but but it's a different inversion here. If you look at it carefully. We're and looking the second line. Uh, yeah, last. The right. Yeah, the last, last two measures. The last two measures of the second line. There we go. Good. And let's stop here. Let's do that one more time from the from the beginning, okay? And let's keep track of all of those chords. So, so look, uh, Venu, we we'll start on C. Okay. We skip one A. Yeah, that, that's very no confusion there. Yeah. That's clear, right? We skip one F. Cool. But now look what happens next. We skip one D. Then what happens if we skip one again? Oh, okay. It has to be B flat. B flat in this case. Yeah, it could have been B, but we have B flat. So B flat, and then if we skip one again, so that's the B flat major chord, right? That the one we have here. So then it's the G chord, and notice that here in the G chord, the composer didn't have it in root position. It's an inversion of the G chord. It's B, okay, yeah. B G okay. instead of G, B, D. Okay, but, yeah. but the harmonic pattern, it's still just skipping one uh, every, all the way down. Okay. So it kind of goes like this. C A F B B G, right? Oh, okay. So yeah, let's do one more time from the beginning now with everything. Okay. And why do you think we stop on the G? What is the G in the key of C major? Uh, it's because it's uh, dominant. Of C. Dominant, yeah, exactly. So then, if you notice the the next line, it's gonna start over. It's gonna be the same thing over again. We go back to C, because oh, okay. the dominant, as we know, it's a good way to end, right? Uh, okay, wait, wait. Okay. Good. So now let's let's do another try from the beginning, from the very beginning. Let's find the, the rhythm better there. So see your rhythm. Ta 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 ta. 
one and two and three and so then the beginning is one and two and three and one so yeah plan plan for the quarter notes like that good So then we have the same thing in the next part. We have the same thing in the next two lines. So let's skip mm -hmm. to the bottom of the page to measure 37. Okay. So let's see what we have there. And if you can, uh, if you can then maybe just look at it first and see if you can recognize the pattern. Mm -hmm. Now let's check those notes. I think GEC. Uh, oh no. It's actually, yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, it's e major. E, C, E. Good. And then, and then look, look at what happens. So, so we go backwards, right? No, but I think you skipped on it. You skipped on it. And then. And now the left hand is going to be the one that's going to be doing. Good. Now you prefer the next one. Good. No, So you, do you notice the pattern is the same? What was the first chord? Good, so this is the second one, right? What was the first The one you measured 37. Yeah. So this finishing here. Good, so what is the first chord? Because we said at the beginning we, we started with C major, then C major. And now I'm just going back to the second third. Yeah, we're going down by thirds, exactly. So you're going to see that it's going to be a similar pattern. Good. So now knowing, knowing that there's this pattern. Good. So now let's try to read it one more time from 37. That was very good. Get ready. No, 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 that should be the C. No, no, C. You, you skip too much in the right hand. That should be the C in the right hand. There we go. Good. Now left hand. The right hand already moves, already gets ready. Left hand gets ready. Now you have the. We have the eight notes now in the left hand. Good. And right there, you have to get ready with the next one. Good. 
and check check the chord there. Remember what the next one in the sequence is? Good. And then this is no, this one doesn't go like that. So this one doesn't follow the same exact pattern. This is where they, they get shorter. Let's see, an octave higher. And now the, uh, the last part, I'm going to let you know that it's the same as the beginning, but you're going to have a little ending. So let's just try that too, just to finish it. So let's continue on. Uh, it's going to be the same uh, as the beginning, basically. Okay, yeah, it's the same. Until the very end. Your left hand ready. Left hand, le still left hand, remember the hand in the third uh, interdependence. So as you're doing the ta na 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 na, left hand should be ta na 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 should be already going there. Okay. Better. Good. Oops, we went too far. Ta na na. If we skipped one, it should be there. One, two, three, one, two. Not too fast, not too fast. One, two, three. And now the back. Surprise. Left hand. Left. That should be the left hand. Yeah, same thing. B. No, I think we have a, uh, that should be B, D, G. It's the same like before. So we're looking in measure. Oh, okay. Now let's see these last chords. Good, an octave higher. Let's see. Yes, but one octave higher. Because see, we have the octave higher sign. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, so let's move that octave higher. And now, what note do you have in the middle, though? Because we have a C on the top, we have a C on the bottom, and what do we have in the middle? Uh, uh, should be C, e, e, actually. No, E. Oh, even the left hand needs, even the left hand is more. Uh, the left hand is C, and the left hand is not an octave higher. The left hand should be just where that C is on the piano, which is... No, that's too low. That would be the one that's in, between, you know, in the third space. And that's the yeah. That's it. And then what is the note in, in between them? Because I don't see you playing that. That's it. Good. That's correct. Good. And then an octave low. Everything will be an octave lower in the next measure. Good. And then finally. Uh oh. We missed something. We missed a little sign there in front of that last note. Oh, okay. There we go. Good. So let me, let me show it to you once. I'm going to play for you, for you from beginning to end. And maybe this is something that you can practice on and learn for next time. Because it's a very simple song. And yeah, exactly. I think this would be a great one for you to get that, that hand in the interdependence. Okay? So let me play it for you once from the beginning. And uh, I'm going to play it for you at full, full speed. Okay? So...
So, so see, even though it's a very simple song and it's kind of repetitive, it, it kind of has the same thing, but there's a lot of expression you can do with it. And I think it's, gonna, it's like an etude. This is basically like an etude that's going to help you with, with this idea that your, uh, your hands are kind of flowing seamlessly between one and the other and you're anticipating. So I would, um, I would try to learn this by, by ne next time I see you on Saturday. And I would even recommend you maybe print this out for Surya. As a okay, sure. as an exercise for sight reading. Now it, she doesn't have to learn it, but just for sight reading. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Okay, and just kind of maybe you can show it to her again like that. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Or maybe in your next class, if you can show it to her. Yeah, so absolutely. Yeah. Definitely, we'll do that. Awesome. So thank you so much for participating in our first adult uh, master class. Um, I want to very briefly. I know you have to go, Teacher Daniel. But um, if you could speak on um, just kind of a brief um, kind of response to, I know that for adult students, sometimes it's really hard to kind of getting out there. Um, and I think it's really important to, uh, you know, have a community um, and have camaraderie when you're an adult. Can you kind of speak a little bit about, um, you know, adult students and how important that is um, and talk about some of the new adult group classes that we have in mind? Yeah, absolutely. So, so um, uh, it it's a very common thing that that uh, sometimes people, you know, go through different careers and but they've always loved music throughout their whole life. They love music. Some people take piano lessons as children and then come back to it later. Some people just have a love of music and don't know if they're too old to start. But the reality is that you're really never too old to start. You can you can start any time, and there's no uh, actually the sooner you do it the more you can accomplish musically in your lifetime. So um, uh, it is very important to have a community. That's why here at the school, we encourage the adult students to have their own events together. We started the adult soirees recently, where adult students get a chance to perform together. And also we have recitals now that are, are just for our uh, adult students. And I think that gives them an opportunity to, to have this community here of uh, people that share similar interests and maybe even discover uh, people that they can play together with. For example, Vanu is a piano, we, is one of our piano students, but we have uh, students, adult students that maybe take violin lessons or saxophone lessons, and maybe they can discover these collaborative uh, opportunities yeah you know. definitely and yeah we actually are just starting um it's kind of still in the works but a new group adult piano class um we're still experimenting with the amount so we're thinking maybe four students or maybe even up to 10 students um but uh anyone who's watching uh we'd love to hear from you if you're interested um it's a great way for kind of as teacher daniel was saying for um having a sense of community as well as camaraderie especially outside of work for us adults who maybe get a little busy and um, it's hard to uh, kind of meet artsy people and stuff like that so if anyone's interested go ahead and let us know but thank you so much for being a part of our adult master class thank you so much teacher daniel and the new for participating we still have a couple other master classes throughout the week that are completely free no attached uh, so go ahead and click the link in our instagram bio if you're interested in signing up and we'd love to have you. Uh, besides that, um, uh, I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of your day um, and keep practicing. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you, really appreciate it.